So anyway, Henry V. So while he is often thought of as an English institution and hero, in actual fact, he's a bit of a knob. Somehow, age 16, at the Battle of Shrewsbury, managed just to get himself shot in the face with an arrow. Now, anybody else would have died either on the spot or the wound would have festered and he would have died. But the uh, physician Bradmore literally fashions a tool so that he can delve into this guy's face and extract all the pieces of arrow so that the young prince lives. This brush is a piece of shit. You might have thought that this would give a young prince pause, you know, make him even slightly happy that he's even alive, satisfy him just a little bit. Wow, no. This is the guy who got insulted about tennis balls. The young Dauphin of France is supposed to have basically answered Henry going, look, I kind of deserve all these titles and stuff from your part of the world by sending him a box of treasures saying, well, this is what you're worth and you can you can have a play with these treasures for a while. And it's a box of tennis tennis balls. So Henry, being the red-blooded Englishman that he was, gets a little bit peeved. He basically raises an army and buggers off to France to lay siege because of, I don't know, broken pride and stuff like that. The usual English toxic masculinity nonsense. He has, in contrast to the French side, ridiculously few men on his side at the Battle of Agincourt. Yeah, it's that one. It's this Henry. Considering he had something ridiculous like one-fifth of the men that the French had, he actually lives and wins. They actually win the Battle of Agincourt with a fifth of the men. I think I need even darker. The hell is that? Anyway, you'd think that this might actually satisfy, like, literally defying all the odds and everything and actually surviving, but no, it's the will of God that he survived, so wow, that wouldn't be a thing. He makes the King of France basically give him his daughter as a kind of, well, he marries her, she becomes Queen of England, but it's basically a kind of thing as, I won't sack your places too much as long as I can top your daughter. But in my mind, the worst thing that he did was Rouen. Have you heard of the Siege of Rouen? It's awful. So Henry turns up at this fortified place called Rouen in France. When the city refuses to surrender, he basically decides to starve them all out. After a, a little while, some of, the, uh, some of the peasant people are actually sent out of the city because, of course, the supplies that they have in the city is no longer enough for everyone. So they get sent out, but Henry will not let them leave. So they basically stay between the city and the army, dying slowly of starvation in front of the English soldiers, who are even reported to have been devastated that they could do nothing. They were just watching these people die. Dies aged about 35 or something like that, of something uh, equally as mundane as, I don't know, dysentery or something like that. Something fitting for such a twonk. Often nobody talks about his scar, but if you see pictures of him, he's actually turned like this so that you can't see the scar that was right across the right side of the face because the physician had to properly open up the wound to get inside and get the arrow out, which I suppose uh, gives you some pause for thought about the bastardy that he suffered then, maybe made him become a bastard later on. Doesn't even see his wife for like most of their marriage, but somehow still manages to produce an heir can never get these colorings as right as I want it. I'm having to do my own makeup because, you know, A, lockdown and B, budget. Don't ask me out. Oof. I think my eyebrows need to be a bigger beast still. But yeah, the dynasty lives on as it were. Oh, Christ, that stuff is strong. Oh, mate. Oh, Jesus. I suppose it gave me enough tears to at least get rid of any residual femme makeup I was wearing this morning. Uh. So yeah, he would have had um, shortened hair, possibly as um, of the most famous picture of him in profile, so that you can't see his scar. I don't do that because instead I wear a cowl because when he comes in, or rather when he's sitting in the bar that he hasn't been in for a while, 
uh, he doesn't want to be seen, he doesn't want to be noticed. Is that equal? That doesn't look 100% equal to me. So yeah, he's often heralded as uh, one of these dudes that is um, for God, Harry, and St. George. But, I mean, as you can tell, he's far from Lily White, in fact. I'd say he was pretty damn psychopathic. Looking in this line. Oh, that's not bad. How does Scar act on? How does Scar act around bearding anyway? Anyone got any answers? I don't think I do. How does that look? Hold on. Mm -hmm. I think I've got chance to get better before we actually go for show day, but uh it's a start. That's a start. So there you have it. For God, Twonk and St. George. Hal or Henry V sitting on the next table from you.